security researcher, I've analyzed hundreds, if not thousands, of malware samples. But as researchers, we're always playing this kind of catch-up game to try to keep up with the new malware authors and new malware samples that are introduced into the wild every single day. In 2023 alone, there were over 33 million attacks on mobile devices. This marks a 50% increase from just the previous year. So what do we do to try to keep up with this? Do we tell all researchers to double the amount of manual analysis that they're performing every single day? It's not really a viable option. So what about automation? Maybe we can try to increase the amount of automation that we have. Maybe we can perform some automated analysis on payloads, arguably the most important piece inside of a malicious application, so that we can try to proactively detect malicious keywords and proactively prevent malware attacks. But I don't always have the payload. There's a lot of different obfuscation techniques that try to prevent reverse engineers like myself from being able to analyze the final payload inside of a malicious application. One very notable such technique is called packing. Now, packing inside of Android is used to protect applications from reverse engineers. This is used for benign applications to protect against malicious reverse engineering, but it's also used heavily to try to prevent reverse engineers from being able to see the final malicious payload inside of Android applications. So what if we instead focus our automation efforts on the packers themselves? We can't try to detect all packers because, as I said, packers can be used for benign, legitimate applications, but we can try to defeat the actual packing process. Dolphic executables inside of Android prevent us a really unique opportunity. They're decompiled back into valid Java code at the end of the day. And not only that, the Android framework builds heavily on top of the Java framework. And additionally, when researchers write custom decryptors to try to unpack malicious Android applications, they're usually going to be writing those custom decryptors inside of Java for compatibility reasons. So this presents a really unique opportunity, which is where I came up with the idea to try to defeat hackers inside of Android. Bad Unboxing is a brand new tool that I wrote to automatically generate custom unpackers for malicious Android applications. If we take a look at an example, starting in the Android manifest, we can see that there are classes defined in here that do not exist on disk. For example, this class right here. This is a sign that this application is packed and is going to dynamically load these classes during execution. The way Bad Unboxing works is that it parses out the relevant code for the unpacking process and turns this into a brand new Java application that's going to drop all dynamic artifacts during execution. Let's take this example and throw this into Bad Unboxing to automatically unpack this. I'm going to open up my terminal and let's run our Bad Unboxing Java file. Here is the initial portion of this. We can simply take our sample and drop this into the GUI portion of this and click the Generate Unpacker button. And now what this is doing is this is parsing the application, finding the relevant code, decompiling that, and now we have a brand new Java application that's going to drop our dynamic contents for us. This is opening up the main entry point to the class. You can go through and see all of the relevant code. What Bad Unboxing does is it locates the application subclass, often abused to decrypt dynamic payloads at runtime, and it makes this the entry point to the brand new Java application. It then goes through and tries to clean up the code to make this a viable Java application during execution. You can see that every single comment that Bad Unboxing has performed, it leaves inside of the app, so you can see what changes have been made to try to make make this a valid Java application. It starts in the application subclass, finds any other classes that it references, and finds any references inside of those classes, and adds those as separate Java files in the supporting generator. It then goes through and removes any references that might be specific to Android. For example, if you take a look at the import section, you can see it has already removed Android-specific imports. Not only that, but it goes through and it tries to replace those Android-specific code references with their equivalent Java counterparts. For example, this code was trying to reference a directory specific to Android, so instead, Bad Unboxing has replaced this with the current directory, so that when we execute this file, all of the dynamic contents are going to get dropped to disk. 
That unboxing also removes all reflective calls and any lines calling methods that contain reflection as well. Reflection gives Android applications the ability to dynamically load and execute methods and classes at runtime, but we don't actually want to invoke any of the malicious code, so instead we can simply remove all of those references. You can use the arrows on the right hand side to go back to all of the different changes that Bad Unboxing has made to fix this application to become a valid Java application. You can see all of the references of the lines that has changed. For example, this entire method has been commented out since it returned a reflective value. Additionally, any references to this method have also been removed since they're not necessary for the execution portion of this. Additionally, bad unboxing also generates unique variable and method names to ensure uniqueness inside of the brand new Java application. If you look on the left hand side, you can see a nice summarization of the details related to packing inside of this application. For example, you can see all of the missing classes inside of this code, as well as the code loader details. For example, it found dex class loader inside of the main application subclass. So let's try executing this and let's see if we can get that dynamic unpacked code. All we need to do is go to the run and execute and this is going to actually execute malicious code. So make sure that you are executing this inside of a safe malware analysis virtual machine. I'm gonna hit continue because I'm in my safe environment and let's do this. Here we go. Now we have successfully executed the relevant portion of code from this malicious application. And you can see we've dropped a ton of different dynamic artifacts during execution. If you take a look at the top left-hand portion, you'll see this dynamic file that has all of those dynamic files that were dropped during execution. And in this case, we can see we have this payload dex folder containing a classes.dex. And this is going to contain all of our dynamic code that was not defined in the application on disk. Now I'm going to open up this dynamic classes.dex file and make sure this contains our unpacked code. So let's open up a second instance of JDEX and let's see what this has inside. So let me put my bad unboxing, unpacker dynamic, and classes.dex, and we can drop that inside of here. Sure enough, if we take a look at the source code, you can see this CN package, which contains all of the defined code that was missing for us inside of this original application. Packing is an extremely common technique used inside of malicious Android applications. In fact, anytime I see a malicious app employing any kind of sophistication inside of its code, it's usually using packing to try to prevent reverse engineers from being able to analyze the payload. Next time you're analyzing a malicious Android application and you're suspicious that it's using packing as an obfuscation technique, use bad unboxing to kickstart your unpacking process and automatically generate a custom decryptor for this application. Don't forget to check out the description of this video for the link to the GitHub repository of Bad Unboxing. Thank you so much for watching everyone. Glory Wired out. I really don't want to use my boost because I'm going to rear-end somebody. Maybe slow and steady wins the race? <laughs>